And I'll tell you, on the original schedule, I was scheduled to leave last week. And Pastor Luke called and said, well, you know, I've got, I know you've got a busy week, and this is a pretty hard lesson, so uh, how about I leave it? And I said, wait, cool, no problem. You take that one, and I'll take the easy one, creation. Um, <laughs> no. Good job. <laughs> um, it is, it's challenging in different ways. And we've said, we've said a little bit about um, going through the verses, the backup verses, and I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll have to do that. Going through those verses this week was really an eye opener. So I amen to your suggestion. Um, even, you. even if you can't get through all of them, go through some of them. Because creation, you know, we know about that. You've created, you've created stuff, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. What, what have you created, Judah? I bet you've created Trouble. something. Legos. Legos. You created trouble, amen. And, <laughs> And Ted's created songs, Quilt. right? And Pastor Luke's created songs and sermons. Created. Yeah. I want to share with you a part of a poem by James Weldon Johnson. I doubt you can read it from there, but that's okay. It's it's like 20 verses long. James Weldon Johnson, in case you don't know, is, is a wonderful, wonderful African-American poet. And, and this is one of his most beautiful poems. And it's about creation. Now, I'm going to pick on James. But I love the poetry of James. So let me read. This is just a few verses. I, I, w I actually had opportunity to sing in a chorus that sang this in high school. And it was really neat, neat arrangement. And God stepped out into space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. Oh, oh. Then God raised his arm, and he waved his hand. This is going on in the poem. Then God raised his arm, and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land, and he said, bring forth. Bring forth, and quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowl and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. He looked on this, his world with all its living things, and he said, I'm lonely still. And God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think, by a deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Huh? And then it goes up on up from the bed of the river. God scooped the clay and, and, he, and he breathed in the breath of life. Okay, it is a beautiful poem. Anybody see a problem with that? It sounds like Judy does. I saw two or three. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and tell, tell us where our brother James might have been. Well, um, um, first of all, God wasn't lonely because he'd already be, been the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit at the point where he had a body to step out. Well, actually, he already said the word that already had created the whole universe uh, prior to that. He's given something because uh, uh, Jesus spoke the word. Jesus was the word, and Jesus spoke the word. Okay, that's... that's you no, know, yeah, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, God being lonely, like, no, God has no need. Now, now, now I can imagine where we might stumble up on there. We, you know, from, from our human point of view, we look at God creating, and, and, and it's just hard for us to imagine that somebody would have so much love to give that they would create all this stuff purely for the purpose of receiving uh, love. So, so I get how somebody might stumble in that way. So, so, so the loneliness, that, that, that's a thing, of course, I would quarrel with my brother James. And just to be clear, James is very much a Christian, and, and he and I can have a chat about it when we get to we meet eventually. Okay, that, that was the point, big point I want to make. Did you see, did you, you mentioned another part, uh, you saw more than one thing? Loneliness, the pre-existence uh, of Jesus the Word, before he spoke the Word to create all, everything and it isn't like he's leaving out God the Father. He's got, got the Son stepping out, I guess. You know, he left, he just, so maybe some of the Trinity missing. He just skipped a little bit, yeah, the original. Yeah, the Trinity missing. I think this is one of the reasons why there was some debate as to what would be the first chapters in writing for Westminster. And so, like, why not start with creation? Yeah. And, like, no, then they started primarily with okay. scriptures and God. Who is God? Because to understand creation, you have to understand a little bit of who God is. And remember, we talked about the words eternal, perfect. And so to be lonely, 
and, and gives this idea that he's not perfect in and of himself, and he is. But why does he create? Well, because it's in his nature to create. So I think that's that's important on the Westminster's part is knowing God and then knowing why he would create. I think that's. I'm so glad you said. That. I think that's what blew me away about prepping this lesson was um, how much more I had to learn about the character of God. I have yet to learn just just from the creation itself. Ted, you're going to say something. Yeah, one of the Psalms says, uh, all things were created for his pleasure. There you go. That's why, that's why we create, because it's fun. I, I love the notion of God having pleasure. A friend of mine wrote a song like along the lines, I well can understand why he might give us bread and water and sustenance for the day, but why the many colors and why the flowers, unless he were a happy God, full of joy and full of beauty. That characterization, and I think I think you all kind of touched on, but just that implication that God needs us—it's that kind of humanistic, you know, like God needs us instead of the fact that we need Him. I think there, there's that implication in there. I'm so glad you said that because, as you say it, I am convicted because, of course, God does need us. I know that. I'm not know that. I'm, I'm a good reform person now, um, but, but 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 I live. I often live as that as if that's the case, right? Let me help you out. That's right. Yeah. You got some advice. Yeah, he makes that him sad when we don't pray. You know, he needs us to pray. No, he no. doesn't. Yeah. That's what you're saying, Dennis. I think that also uh, it, what uh, bothered me was he thought and he thought and he thought. Oh, yeah. God doesn't have to, like, think and think and think and think. It's not like there's something, you know, if I just think hard enough, I'll get this thing. No. I think if anything, he, you know, he had to pull back and edit from creation, you know, because he would have just have so oh, much yes. coming out. Yes, yes, I, I caught myself praying, well, do you have an idea about this? Oh, he yeah. laughs at me and said, I've got it. Well, let's be kind to James Weldon Johnson. He's a he's a poet, and he, this yes. is a folksy, yes. a folksy yes. poem. It's it's endearing and charming, and it's, uh, it's uh, almost, you know, from a child's point of view, and, you know, it's not meant to be a, be a illogical treatise. Yeah. 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 But it's a good little basis to have this discussion. I mean, yeah. it's a good yeah. Yeah. Right. right. I, I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. I, I, I do think Weldon is, is in error there, but I think that it's not, uh, it, it's a it's a, a forgivable error, if you will. Sure. And, and he and I can have a good conversation. Maybe he fixed it in some of those lower curses that are 20 <laughs> verses. <laughs> maybe he was, you know. We well, can read the whole thing. If you, if, if you doubt, uh, Google, uh, J Google creation, James Weldon Johnson. And by the way, um, some of you know the, um, the, the hymn we often sing around, um, uh, oh, what you call it? Uh, Let every voice and sing, or the book to live in heaven ring. He wrote their text to that, too. Um, and let's see, there was another hand over here. Oh, okay, we'll go ahead then. Okay, so let's think creation. He created the world out of nothing for his purposes. Bad that harks back to Debbie's point, right? Not for our purposes, but for his purposes. We so easily won them. And back to Judy's point, the whole Trinity was there and involved. Yes, I've been told that before, but this jumped out at me. Uh, the, the Father, I mean, at least when I, even when I read the creation story naively, it was pretty easy to see God the Father there. You know, this is God. Boom! It's great. There's God the Father. The Son was there. Can somebody read, please, John 1, 2 to 3? John 1, 2 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him, and nothing that was made was not made by Him. Or I can always mess that up. I, 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 was, I forgot I had him. Without Him was not anything made. <laughs> I forgot I had on the slide. I thought you were saying that from memory. I was impressed. I do. I love that. That's yeah. like he was I, there. Okay. So, so the word was there, as Debbie said, as Judy said a moment ago. Okay. The word was there before any of any. He's there and he's hanging out with God. Does that cause us to think at all? Um, I won't say differently because you probably thought. It, what is that? How does that cause us to think about Jesus having walked here? Here's, here's the word, part of all creation, and he takes on the form of man and walks here. I guess 
you're looking at me like, what can we say? That's huge. That's when his name was Andy. Andy Walsh. <laughs> 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 and I think that's part of like uh, John when he wrote it, and we beheld, like you can tell, like there's this this weight to his words in First John. We beheld his glory. We saw it. the all creating one was among us. One of the things that John seems to be especially good at, and I'm so glad you raised the possibility that he's young when he was called, is is what I call the wonder. Looking, looking at creation, looking at another human being, and seeing something of God. You see the kids do that a lot. Little Xander's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And we're, yeah. but, 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 but too, I, I was talking with a, a lady um, at work whom I can't stand. And I was convicted about not being able to stand her. And I looked at her directly as she's talking to me. I don't think she knows I can't stand her. And I, re I noticed that she has very beautiful eyes and God's kind of knocking on my head saying, she's made in the image of God. The spirit was there, as Judy pointed out. The spirit of God was hovering, brooding over the waters in Genesis 1-2. Okay. He made the, uh, yeah, Romans, 1136, he made the earth, the heavens, us, and all things visible and invisible. All things visible, okay, no problem, the flowers, the balloons, Jacob, Michaela, everybody. Invisible, that intrigues me. What's to be made that's invisible? Microscopic things and uh, emotions. Little bitty things. Emotions. He made emotions. Well, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I think it, I think it goes beyond that. There's a there's a heavenly mm -hmm. portion of the invisible, the angelic right. parts, right. and the things that's in the above. Right. So all all your heavenly creatures, including the adversary himself, are yeah. under his creation. He himself was made, and I was just kind of. Reawakened to that a few months ago. I'm trying to remember the book that you put us on to. It's called uh, The Unseen Realm, right? The, 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 where, where, where he makes the case, he makes case, his, his case is much more involved in, in this. But it's easy to forget that there are indeed spiritual beings, both Godward and decidedly opposed to God, around us all the time. I know spiritual warfare gets a lot of press in some circles, and people talk about it as if we know more about it than I think we do. But, 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 but it's a reality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the tugging and pulling when you're resisting sin, you know, that, that, that they're, they're are real spiritual beings. Um, who is it, who, who is it that, that he's, a, um, I think it's Elijah. He's, yes. He has to be told to look. First or second Kings where he says, he, the, the, the helper guy the comes husband. running into the tent and goes, we're surrounded, and, and he takes him out, and he opens his eyes, and he sees that the hills are covered with an army yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of angels. Oh, yeah, to yeah, fight yeah. for them. I, yeah, I've assumed that they're... they're yeah. it, it's Elijah, right? Yeah. And that's going I think it's an Elijah. Like a and this is like being recently, like even like atheistic or agnostic scientists and scholars, are, there's a lot of study going into right now. Um, quantum realm and uh, also consciousness and what is consciousness and does it exist in the mind. And there's clearly, we know, that there's clearly visible light, for example. We only see a very narrow portion of what's actually there. Yes. Um, even if you think about just radio waves and microwaves and things of that nature. Yeah. But there's something like, possibly, 12 dimensions. Yeah. Well, Try to put your brain around that. Uh. You know, there's a lot in front of us. There could be something right in front of us that we have no ability to see. Isn't God that, yeah, isn't that so often how God works with us for growth? We, we, we discover something cool, and then we discover new layers of it. And, and in the best case, it's new layers of, about him, his character. I mean, it, looking at the flower, or if you've ever been in love. Yes, I have. A long time ago, I have. And, you know, you, you keep discovering, or, or, or with 
mind shift. You keep discovering new things about the person. And you see more of God, what's included in the invisible, for sure. Okay, he reveals his character through creation. That, that, this is the part that really grabbed me, revealing his character. What, what, um, would someone read Romans 1.20? For a change, I didn't type it on the slide. <laughs> so, Romans 1.20, someone. <laughs> Judah, I think, excuse, before you read the, I thought you were going to say something, and I, I blew by you. Well, Were you going to say something about Elisha? I, I think it was Elisha. You think it was Elisha? Uh, and I'm telling you. Elisha went up. I think you. Elisha went up by tree. Elisha was the follower. Yeah. That's the one that came out from the valley. Okay. okay. And, and I mean, this young man knows. So uh, listen to him. Thank you very much. I think Elisha went up the mountain and he dumped the barrels of water on the calf and lit and ask God to light it. And Elisha, the other one, the follower, the follower, he had the on the mountain. All oh, right, it does, it does come back. May I send my two 28-year-olds to you for two minutes, please? <laughs> Are you smarter than a fifth grader, remember? That, no. <laughs> Often so not. <laughs> does somebody have Romans 120? I'm almost there. I got it. Okay, go for it, Brother Al. Uh, the scripture reads, well, since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We can see him. One pastor I know says that he's never met an actual atheist. Um, I feel like I haven't met a couple, but I understand what he means, that you look around and at, at, at the the complexity of it, if nothing else. Okay, he reveals his character. This this is who I am. Remember that when he's gonna when Moses wants to see him, and he's going to walk past Moses. Okay, Judah, check me on this because I may get some details wrong. Uh, yet he, he he has them kind of go in a little cleft thing, and, and he's going to cover him as he goes by, so as God goes by, so that he can't see the whole thing, because that'd be way too much for him, and he would die, but he gets to see his, he gets his face. Yeah, he gets to see his face, but he can, he can see his back. God would have to reveal himself to us, and, and, and so he does, so some of the things. Um, let's see, yeah, I think we'll get it going ahead uh, on time. Can somebody get... Jeremiah 10, 12, and somebody else, Psalm 104, 24. Who will do Jeremiah 10, 12? Wave at me, even as you're finding it. Wave at me if you're going to look up Jeremiah 10, 12. Judy, it looks like you might be doing that. Well, I'm Okay, Judy, I'm, I'm volunteering you. Yeah, I got Jeremiah. Right. 10, 12, please. And will somebody else volunteer to look up Psalm 104, 24? Michaela's got that. Thank you. Judy, whenever you're ready. 10, 12. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Thank you. Power, wisdom, understanding. Michaela, Psalm 104. How countless are your works, Lord? In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Countless. In wisdom, you have made them all. Okay. God's revealing his character. Now, one of the problems when we read something like this is we have redefined most of these terms to fit our needs. So I find it helpful to think in terms of examples. If God's, if God's revealing these characteristics, how, a quick example, how does God reveal his power? And all that he has made. To make all this stuff, for one thing. Better in, better in a 3D printer. <laughs> Way better. Uh, I love thunderstorms. And pow. How does he reveal his wisdom? Oh, Matthew, you're going to ask. I was just going to say, or actually propose a question. You ever wonder why he only saw his back? I know this is going backwards, but the point is, like, in order to see God forward, Often we have to look back because he's already been here. We're trying to catch up. 
Yeah. Great point. Yeah, that. So, so when he yeah. says, hey, you can't see me fully because I'm already, basically he's saying I'm beyond, I'm in eternity. This is an eternity past. So in order to see me and find me, you look back. So we're reading stories in the Bible all throughout Scripture and even Revelations, waiting for these events to happen. That's how he says you can see me and you find me when you look back because he's eternal. And then the Scriptures say that you look in a mirror dimly because you forget who you really are. But anyway, go ahead. No, no. A reflection. And God's already in the future. He's already he's in the present and he's in the past. He's ever present. And we're bound in time. Yeah. And and looking looking at something, we were talking about it some last week. Looking at something in your life and saying, Wow, that really stank at the time. And now I see God's hand. You know, yeah. It still really stank. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think Pastor Pete would that's a week we he would I, I think he would look back at these times and, and say, um, except that he, he sees God already in it, even his persecution. <clears throat> Yeah, that's Matthew, right. I, I, that's that's really deep. I've never yeah, thought about it that yeah, way. It but but something that is clearly evident is no unholy soul can look on holiness at this particular time. And we, we're not allowed to see him as he is yet. Mm -hmm. But I also like Matthew's uh, question there because that, that is something that to be said about that as well. But when you talk about holiness and unholiness, that's a clear, evident piece of that. Because we die on the spot. We've not, we've not gotten there yet. Oh yeah, and there, there are instances uh, uh, in scripture of, of people. Um, but I like Matthew's question, because it is an open-ended question. And it's a commentary question, really. Because when yeah. you think about it, exactly. there's no dimensions that, that can limit God himself. So you know, you, you can look at that as one of those maybe dual messages up for discussion and commentary. Write a commentary, please, Matthew. <laughs> Instead of Matthew Henry's commentary, we'll have Matthew Wheeler's commentary. <laughs> but that, that brings home again to me that, the, the, that I have to keep being brought to the fact that we are bound in time and God is not. And there's so much we cannot see as a result of that. And another thing I love about that aspect of his character is that he will give us the experience and then we maybe we don't get it. And sometime years later, ha, huh, there's God. Maybe we weren't even Christian. Yeah. But when, when the thing happened. It occurred to me, reflecting a little bit this morning too, um, from time to time he has them put up um, oh, like a rock or something or a pile of rocks to Remind them of things. Ebenezer. Uh, yeah. uh, Ebenezer. Ebenezer is a boy, and there's no time they're, they're, they're gathering. And when I, I was going over, trying to think whether there was any time in Scripture where they were commanded to put up a memorial to a person. Because, okay, th this is way off track, but here's what got me down that road. Um, I went to the little park the other day, um, and I had, as a favor to a friend, agreed to purchase a memorial butterfly in memory of my son. And I thought it was gonna be this little butterfly, you know, it kind of off on a tree, and they, they needed like 15 of them. Okay, so, all right, Daddy, I'll, I'll purchase one. Okay, so, this is like a year ago. Good. Didn't, I, I haven't actually planned on using it this, in this, but it, it seems like it applies. Um, okay. So, you can pass that around. It's 10.23, 10.29 and 3, in case it goes out. Okay, so I went, and they said, oh, the butterflies are up. I, I kind of lost track of it. And I thought, cool. And I went there, and they look stupid. Um, they look really <laughs> silly. There are these little multicolored butterflies. That's okay. That's okay. But 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 I then I, I that was my first reaction. Is, is is it looks like a little party game thing? And then I thought, well, why do I why do I care? And 
I thought, you know, it's neat that they were selling these memories to our, everybody had, had, had deceased children. I don't know. God was having, a, in scripture, God was having us remember God and God's works. Uh, all I'm saying, and, and please understand, my son has a gravestone, you know, I'm, I'm good with, with all that. I'm not, not going to say that. But it made me think about our tendency to say, i got to be remembered. i gotta, I got to have my, my plaque or my donation. I'll come, come to campus. You'll see plaques and everything everywhere. I don't know. When God put up a memorial, God had them put up a memorial, it was to the work of God. And it didn't even have Moses' name on it. That just, there's so, that struck me. Okay, getting a chart, but don't worry, I don't have that many slides. I promise we get in trouble if we go over, right? So, go, I promise we won't go over. 10, 10 o'clock, yes, 10 o'clock is our drop dead time. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody's, nobody's been on their phones, nobody's looked at their watches, I'm just so proud of you. I mean, you're quite used to the other. Wisdom, okay, wisdom, how is, how is his wisdom review? Everything works. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not entropy at all points like they teach you in science class. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and it, how come? Murphy's Law. <laughs> entropy is a, is a law. Yeah. It's not a theory. That's well, uh, one it's of like the laws. The but nature. everything works against yeah. falling apart. Yeah. The, 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 whole, the whole science of physics. I don't know much about physics. I, after I retire, I want to take some courses in physics. We find that like almost everything that we create is somehow a, a rough version of what's already been created. Um, for example, you look at the cell, and I'm trying to remember the part of the cell that has the little spinning motor on it inside the cell. The nucleus? Uh, no, no, the mitochondria. Like, 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 uh, uh, well, no. I bet you didn't. Anyway, <laughs> not, not, not the, not the uh, mitochondria. That's the powerhouse itself. But, it's got a spinning rotary motor in oh. it that moves it around, and it's it's more efficient and moves at a faster rate than any motor we've ever created. You know, and so a lot of people have taken and looked at the cell and tried to use what is already the, the template that is there to create a lot of things that we have today. And so, and obviously, when you even look at the microscopic or the ginormous level, but even the microscopic level, you see. Wow, what intelligence, you know? Oh, it only gets right. Oh, I mean, I mean, the, the the wisdom is just everywhere. The the notion, um, at a jewel, we have an observatory. After COVID, we will again have observatory open houses where you can come to there, climb up the little stairs, and Dr. Gilker. Uh, uh, very old guy. We'll have the telescope fixed on like Saturn or Eclipse or whatever, and, and you get to go look at it. Now, what no, a lot of people, what he will never tell you is Gilker donated a lot of the money for that, but contingent on them putting up a thing in it that said, uh, like it's like a plaque or, some, or a stone or something, said the heavens declare the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And he would only, uh, only do that if that was the case. And here's a guy who knows physics inside and out. We're getting, I, I want to do a couple more. We won't. We won't um, deliver all of them. Um, how? Duh! How is his love revealed in his creation? Jesus. Jesus. Begin the power of his name. Oh yeah. That's he provides for his creatures. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Earth's orbit is ideal. The uh, the currents, if we didn't have the currents, they would be too hot and too cold in parts of the world. Uh, it, it talks about it in the Bible, it provides food for the animals in their season. Uh, everything, just the interplay of oxygen and the quote, poison carbon dioxide. Um, everything is in balance for all of his creation. Cool. Gosh, yeah, and, and, I, and I'm not up on the, the physics of it all, but people have told me that there's somehow the Earth is at exactly the right temperature and exactly the right distance of the sun, and that's oh, one yeah. of the reasons life and can exist on other so planets. Planets go 
get really hot and really cold because they have a very elliptical orbit. Uh, the size of our star, the balance of the large planets and the small ones in our solar system. Uh, Jupiter vacuuming up most of the objects that would bombard us even today. It's, it's, it's very wonderful. Wonderful. I love <laughs> that idea of wonder. All, all, of, all of these characteristics. I'm starting very slowly to learn to look at something and it, I, I was in the habit for you know last year and a half or so of saying, well, well, thank you, God, for the, this flower, this person, or whatever. But but to to begin to say, open my heart to something about your character. Te teach me something. I don't do it nearly often enough, but I'm learning to. Okay, now a little bit. Uh, I had to learn a little bit of academic stuff. Six days, really. I never gave it much. Six days. Okay, cool. Six days, really. That's a whole lot to do in six days. I don't know about all that. Um, so, okay, feel free to correct me at any point because I'm teaching stuff that is new to me. Uh, <coughs> there's a Hebrew word, and yom, yom, like in yom, like in yom Kippur, right? Exactly. They, they have a tone. and it's mean it means day. And uh, so tells Mr. Hugh Ross, and I'll, I'll have a reference on here that uh, you put me onto a wonderful video on YouTube that you'll want to check out if you're interested at all in this stuff. It, it can mean several different things. Yom can mean um, all of the daylight, part of the daylight, a 24 hour period, or a long but infinite time. Yom is used in scripture to have each of these four meanings at different places. Okay, now people have said uh, all along, um, did, was it created in six days? I don't personally believe that our, anything about our salvation stands or falls on what we understand about that. But, but, but I think it is important. And, um, Ligonier Ministries taught me just this week that there are four basic ideas. One is called the gap theory. And I remember hearing the gap theory uh, a while ago. So they, they're kind of a break between Genesis 1 2 and Genesis 1 3. The Spirit of God brooded on the waters. And then, like, um, TV timeout. And then who, do, who knows what? And all this stuff was going on. And then here we come back. So, one way people have explained that whole this six days thing is yeah, it was kind of six days, but there was this big gap when he had lots of time to do it. Um, the day age theory, which is probably before I thought much about it, kind of what I thought, the days were just really long. They weren't 24 hours. Um, in, our, in our estimation of hours. Yeah, exactly. 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 Thank you. So let me throw a wrench in that. What if he says the day is a thousand years, or what if it was a thousand years? Or is it a day? I'm just saying, like, like just the theory of the microscope, there are a large, large amounts of time. And then, like I said, you, you zoom in. Like, we're trying to take this theory and cram it into the, into a moment of time. What, wonder, wonderfully said. And, and Ross actually kind of, kind of somewhat goes there, not about this, but he says, we're looking at it from our human perspective, standing here, and God is looking at it from God's perspective, and it's very, very different. Okay, the other two theories, the framework hypothesis. Now, this is actually the one that R.C. Sproul, if you know R.C. Sproul, he's the Ligonier Ministries guy, he's, the, he's my go-to guy in terms of, am I on the right track? Um, with Reformed theology. But he said for a lot of his career, he believed this one. The framework hypothesis is, well, I guess you can kind of tell what literary style is being written in, like um, Song of Solomon and Proverbs, or, or Song of Solomon, and well, especially Song of Solomon, it is in poetry style, and then there are some that are more in the historical style. Well, Genesis has kind of both. So there's history and poetry going on. So this is a kind of poetic account. Uh, my brother said to me when we were kids, well, Moses wasn't going to say, in the beginning was the amoeba, you know, and, and he was kind of being a little arrogant. Um, but it, the, 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 this is the sort of poetic account. And then the other possibility, of course, is, is literally six days. And R.C. Sproul, in what I was reading, said for most of his career, he believed the framework hypothesis. And more recently, he believes six days. And he goes on to explain how it's, you have to do some hermeneutical gymnastics mm -hmm. to, uh, to get anything other than six days. He also uh, makes clear that he, he doesn't either think that um, 
one's whole theology or salvation stands or falls on which of those. Um, for me, that raises a bigger question, and I, and I got corrected on my wording of this, uh, rightly so. Uh, my, my question was, okay, so what do we do when we run into a conflict uh, between science and scripture? And when I voiced that question to Pastor Luke, he said, he said it more kindly, but he said, there are no conflicts between science and scripture. Okay, so I stuck putting it in right. It, I, I, I stuck in the word in here. Okay, so, have you had that happen? Have you run into something where science clearly says X and scripture clearly says Y? And what are we put back? For, where are you about to say? Sorry. I don't know, like with a lot of the theories I mean, I just like, I joke with you, I'm like, oh, 400 million years ago, I'm glad somebody was there to record it, you know, like, <laughs> well, they were there, and they weren't, you know, like, and so, I just feel like, if the, if, if the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit, then the account of the Bible, they were there, because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was there, and so, like, I just don't think it's even an argument, you know, like, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, it, and also, like, with the creation six days, just, like, if God is outside of time, you know, did he, was it necessary that he stepped inside of time to create it? I don't know. We do but want him to extend you know, like, But I feel like there was some intentionality by the writer of Genesis by saying this was the first day, this was the second day, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, I don't have any, like, concrete answers to the say of the Lord, but, like, I just think, like, that was intentional, um, but, like, it's total purpose, I'm not sure. Well, you should believe what the Bible says, because if they can't figure out with science, they're just going to guess and make another theory. <laughs> That's one thing. You and, nailed psychology. <laughs> and uh, I agree with my mom, who was there to record it? If science does, if science doesn't know, the Bible knows because God was with the people who wrote that He told them what to write with the feather, write the word. And can science, um, can science write a book uh, about everything true? No, they can't because they don't have God. Without God, nothing is possible. Plus, the word science means He knows. <laughs> and I think um, it's well said, Judah, and it is true that science has a lot of theories that are, you know, you're supposed to be taken as fact, which we find that all the time science is learning new things and trying to figure it out. And I think that science is ultimately, as Judah was saying, it is, if it's done correctly, it will point to exactly as God has said it. Um, so yes, God's, God's word is, 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 the top here and everything we're doing in science and I think science is always done correctly is going to prove everything that God has said and that's what I've seen in, in my own study of it but the thing we have to remember with Genesis is that it was Genesis chapters 1 through 11 prior to Abraham was called the prehistory which was before writing so most of these were oral stories that were used for memorization purposes and so there's absolutely a framework of this of Genesis of being in this framework it's absolutely true I believe that but it's also, they would get around fire, someone would say it, and it was used as a memor you know, it had to be memorable, and, and that's why it was given in this way, I think, by God. But it was a theology text that went against all the Mesopotamian creation texts, like the Enuma yeah. Elish or the Epic of Gilgamesh, that said that God, you know, there were many gods who created these kind of things. And so Genesis was written and told to the people of Israel to say, no, Yahweh created everything, and he created it in this order. Mm -hmm. And looks and so it wasn't trying to say things necessarily scientifically, in the sense that we Westerners trying to understand things. It was trying to say, here's the God who created it. He created you. You're, so it's very much theology. But also, I think we're going to be saying if you put that to this, if you can even put Genesis to the scientific quote unquote <laughs> test, and it will still be proven true. So it, it's true on two sides, I believe. Absolute, absolute preach. Yeah. yeah, those other accounts said that uh, one god killed another god and carved up his body, and that out of his liver came this, and out of his brain came that. But 
there are parallels if you look at it just even with an open mind to one of your atheistic scientific friends. Genesis is saying things happen in stages. So does modern science. Genesis said, uh, God said, there, let there be light and there was light. That was the first thing. And they laugh and say, well, there was no sun. How can you measure the day on um, day one? But science right now, the, the best theory says that there was uh, the Big Bang, which was lots of light. Mm -hmm. And everything came from that uh, explosion of the uh, elements I think, there. I, I think the genius of, of, of a God of the universe who created us is he's going to always present what our senses and the way he created us to take in. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with Pastor Luke. I believe if science is used correctly, it would bear out what he's already given us visual-wise and in our brains uh, to take in because we are seeing is believing creatures. Yeah. God knows that very well. So I a lot of times when you use, like Pastor Luke said, in the beginning, stories were passed on, but there were catch words. There were words that were painted in pictures. There were hieroglyphics. So, so things that would appeal to the very senses that we have as created beings. Agreed on all counts with, with this addition, not caveat, but addition. Um, science is so prominent that we will run into situations where there appears to be a contradiction. Think Galileo people who would look through Galileo's telescope or call heretics. Science has at times corrected a misunderstanding of scripture. Now we need to be careful with that because you get, oh yeah, you know. Get, but it's that's no different than when uh, individuals are trying to indicate that because there's con contrasting views from uh, people of the Bible that the Bible's not legitimate, you know. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. But, uh, but the parallels bear out that they, just because one sees it one way and the other sees it slightly different doesn't mean that it's not fact and truth. Oh, it, absolutely, and that's where humility comes in, right? Uh, can I get four minutes of grace? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, how did the Big Bang happen? How did what created the Big Bang? Like, how did that happen? Did it just everything was already made? It can't. A Big Bang can't just happen out of nothing. Right. Only if, if you have science, science doesn't prove that bangs can't happen without anything. So it would have to be already created to have that big bang and come out exactly. of life. But it would already have life, so that's not true. And the other theory, um, <laughs> if the god killed the other god, what happened to that other god who's still living? That's what the other people were believing in the time of Moses, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, <coughs> this, the Bible is different because it doesn't start with God's plural, as, as Pastor Luke said, it starts with God speaking. So God created everything out of nothing, which science says you can't have, you can't create matter out of nothing. But science now is discovering that somebody created matter out of nothing. <laughs> so, because you have to have matter to big bang. So they're, they're flirting with the idea, oh, we were wrong. And so it's, it's great to see. The other point I want to make, the, the phrase in, in the first few verses of Genesis, the earth was formless and void. Uh, that phrase in Hebrew is, uh, it, it sounds like a little poem, tohu vavohu, and that means ruined and desolate. Uh, does it also Which, mean empty? Because that's kind of a whole idea. Ruined, desolate, but it also can imply that there was a great destruction to something earlier. So there's another gap, possibly. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I, I would really like to say something. Um, I am very interested in everything you're saying. I think right along the same lines. Um, but I think that something we kind of toy around with and just needs to say it to be said more bluntly is that we are looking at this text when we're talking about science, we tend to look at this text as um, 21st century Westerners. Yeah. Like, okay, we have to have a scientific basis. We have to, and as soon as we see God made, for whatever reason, we're thinking science, so we're thinking, okay, we can't. 
But then we like gloss over verse three. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. So automatically, this God does not make the way we make it. He bends down and he makes man with his bare hands in the earth. But from verse three, it's his voice. Mm -hmm. And so tying into what both of you have said about other um, religious texts of the area and of the day, of different gods having wars and fighting and making things out of bodies, or that's a whole mess of stuff that's really painful to read. Um, but as soon as you read this, these aren't the, the recipients weren't people thinking in terms of this has to be scientifically proven with the atom. These are people thinking there is a supernatural force out there that we know because there's sun, moon, stars, there's weather, there's things outside of our control and understanding. And there's something going on. And this one says is way different because he's making with his voice, not violence. Mm -hmm. And by the end of this poem, like you said, this kind person creating with his voice bends down to actually physically make something himself in that sense. Amazing. Thank you. Brethren, I hate to cut us off, but I'm way over my grace period already. So I'm going to save the other slide for in a few weeks. I'll be leading again, and then I'll sneak this slide in. Um, but I do commend to you our catechism questions. What is creation? Creation is God's making everything out of nothing. But it's a powerful word, like I just said. All very good. How did God create man? God created Man, male, and female in his own image, typo, and in knowledge, righteousness, and holiness to rule over the other creatures. Read those catechism questions. Take them to heart. Debbie, would you pray us out? Heavenly Father, we are in awe of your loving and powerful creation. 